Today's port report is from Flom, Norway's gateway to sites along the mighty Sangiafjord. It's all about the scenery here. We cover all the port basics and our experience touring on water and track, and riding the future of Norway cruising, the all-electric ship. I'm Troy and this is the Port Lowdown. Flom is at the base of an arm along the Sangiafjord, Norway's longest and deepest. This is Norway 101, the one must-see fjord in any itinerary. For this particular area, the basic plan is the nutshell round trip, in this order. Cruise from Flom to Gunvagen along the narrow and drop-dead gorgeous Narefjord. Take a bus to a train line in Voss. Take a train to the mountain-high town of Meyerdahl. Then take a separate scenic train back down to Flom. If you go in reverse order, it's too time-consuming. There are other excursions here, of course, like rib boat trips, the Borgen Stave Church, Norway's best, but it's 35 miles away, a Viking village, even a shoe factory tour. But for your first time here, well, you know, soak in nature's bounty. The town is small, with a population of about 200 that balloons when ships come calling. And you're not the only ones here. Lots of regional tourists road trip here, so there's hotels, RV parks, camping, and the like for the locals. Flum is basically a tourist base camp. And even though there's only one big berth, the town can handle two additional offshore ships with tenders. The dock faces an administrative building with a lounge for crew members and an office where you can apply for tax-free refunds on your purchases, as well as a public toilet. Turning left, it's a short five-minute stroll to the tourist shopping and information complex. Everything is there that you'd expect. Restaurants, tourist info, train ticket counter, more public toilets, and souvenirs, of course. Just outside the visitor center are your two main points of departure, the ferry dock on your left and the train tracks straight ahead. On the other side of the tourist complex, across the street, is the Coop Market, which we'll have to do for our pharmacies since there is none in town. By the way, if you're stopping at Voss, there is a pharmacy near the train station, Optech 1. Restaurants are plenty, if pricey. While there are food trucks here as well, we settle for a Coop Market sandwich and snacks. Here the food is so-so and tourist priced. Go as cheap as you can here and save the big meals for the ship. If you want to explore on your own, there is a car rental service here, eMobility, that offers two-person electric cars with self-guided tours on board. Let your GPS be the tour guide. It's located about a five-minute walk from the tourist center, about a three to five-minute walk adjacent to the Fretheim Hotel. Best to book ahead if you can. For bikes, there's a rental rack alongside the tourist complex, fully accessible through an app. There's also a rental shop, Flom Bike Rental, next to the train museum. Finally, the local bus stop is here, next to the tourist complex, which also serves organized tours. So to explore the nutshell, you can do a full loop, or just part of the way if time is short on separate legs. Any leg of the trip can be purchased separately, but the easiest is through a package sold by Fjord Tours, the main tour agency. These can't be purchased on site, they need to be reserved online in advance. In fact, book everything in advance. Assume all tours, ferries, buses, and trains will be close to capacity on arrival. By the way, if you enjoy being an independent and informed cruiser, be sure to like and subscribe for our weekly videos. Now we chose to slightly modify the nutshell for time reasons, doing the poor man's version with a cruise and single round trip on the train from Flum. We first opted for the Flum to Gunvangen cruise with Fjord Tours first thing in the morning. But what we didn't expect was the awesomeness of the boat. It's promoted as the future of Fjord cruising to help minimize environmental impact. The ship itself is very slick, modern and comfortable with no reserved seating, just take what you can. All ramps on the outside are for accessibility to all levels. Lots of deck space, so there's always a decent view wherever you are. Inside, the lounge areas are cozy and spacious with lots of wide windows for those who don't want to brave the cold. Ports for USB and power, luggage storage, an elegant cafe, clean toilets, of course. But what really stood out was how quiet and fast the ship was. It's really weird. I kind of like it. It's like our electric car. It practically glides on the water. It's really eerie and hushed. It feels like a way more intimate experience with the fjord. Airways on the front, taking pictures, and when we get around the bend and we approach that vista, almost everyone just quiet. And with a boat this quiet, you really take in the experience. 
by canoeing down the river. It's really eerie, but it's amazing. And a cruise fjord. Electric. Gotta be electric. You can book a round trip on this boat or get out at Gunnvagen. Gunnvagen itself is even a smaller tourist outpost with the typical restaurants, bars, toilets, and shops. The tourist center also serves as a small hotel, which we poked around in for a few minutes, crossing the bridge to find the Viking Village and Park Play Area. Great for kids. But this place is really to catch the bus to Voss or back to Flum. We went back to Flum through some really long tunnels. Norway is famous for them. The whole experience, from boat to bus ride back, took about three hours. Back in Flum, we took a chance at booking last minute round trip tickets to the Flum's Bonner Railway, the scenic train. And we got lucky for one ticket. A few takeaways here. Get in line as early as you can to snag a seat on the right side going up. When you come into the train, make sure you're on the right side of the train going up the mountain. And additionally, with a window, it opens up. Like that. So you get some ventilation. You can also point your camera out. But these are highly coveted. You may have to come early, because when I got on the train, I got here 20 minutes early, and all this side was pretty much taken up. Because I also found that it's really hard to change seats once you get on, because most people don't get off the train, they just go through all the way through. What's cool is the train will stop for a picture break at the route's best waterfall, Jossfassen, where the legend tells of a maiden temptress Hulda who lives beyond the falls and lures men with her song. Didn't seem to work this time. It's beautiful, but nobody wants to miss the train. Nobody. Oh, there she is. The views are quite amazing, actually, but you can't move about the train as much or stand outside to any observation platforms. Allow for about two to two and a half hours. It was raining pretty hard on return, so I popped into the Flom Railway Museum inside the old train station next to the tracks. It's a well-presented museum detailing the struggles to create the Flomsvala line, with replicas of historic interiors and a train car, all accessible in English. It's the only museum in town, good for about a half hour, and free. Small as Flom is, it's an inviting and beautiful place that can warrant a second trip. If we returned here, I'd try the e-mobility car or a bike rental for a different perspective. By the way, the send-off was warm and wonderful. Thank you for a nice visit! Even the locals came out. If you have anything to share about Flum or have questions, be sure to drop us a line in the comments. We'd love to hear from you.